Hey guys, what's up? Today's video is going to be all of my tips and tricks that I have collected over the years when it comes to makeup shopping. A lot of these tips have definitely saved me a lot of stress and money. It's also helped out my friends a lot when it comes to things like shopping for makeup and getting the right product for you. I feel like makeup shopping for people that aren't as confident with makeup um, or someone that's just starting out with makeup can be kind of daunting. Uh, there are a lot of options, there are a lot of brands and quite frankly for someone that doesn't know what they're doing it can be very intimidating. I saw a meme going around recently and um, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. I'm pretty sure it's like one of those viral ones that's going around. It was a meme of um, like the Kardashians and it's all like screen grabs of them from the show and they're leaning with their hand um, like on a bench or something or they've got their hand to their face and the, the meme is like like wondering who matched their foundation color and I thought oh my god do people really think that you match your foundation to your hand because if this was true for me I would have the wrong color on right now but it matches my neck so I just was like oh my god maybe people don't know that you're not supposed to do that so I thought that I would make this video to help out people that um are a little bit intimidated going makeup shopping, not sure what to buy, not sure how to match themselves to things. And I definitely think this will save you money, time as well, and it will definitely save you a lot of heartache because makeup is expensive. Like, let's be honest, it is expensive. And if you are getting the wrong shade or something like that, it's gonna be very disappointing. So I'm gonna be giving you some tips when it comes to shopping drugstore and high end. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Before you go shopping for anything, whether it is foundation, lipstick, highlighter, hair products, whatever it may be, my biggest suggestion to you is watch, listen, read reviews. Bloggers, YouTubers, podcasters, whoever it is, watch or listen to a review about the product that you're hoping to buy Bloggers and YouTubers do this for a reason. It's to be helpful. So definitely take advantage of that. It's online. It's free. You have free information at your fingertips. Use it. And when you're picking which reviews you want to watch, read or whatever, pick very wisely. Firstly, you want to look for a number of things. Firstly, it would be credibility. Now, this can be in your own personal way of just knowing whether you've been following them for a long time, whether they're honest or not. And credibility also in the way of whether they actually know what they're talking about. I don't think I would really be very helpful if I was talking about like growing a lemon tree or something because I have a lemon tree and it's not produced any lemons thus far and it's been about five years. So what I'm trying to say is read a review that is coming from someone that definitely knows what they're talking about and they have credibility in that as well as you knowing that you can trust what they say you know that you can trust that what they're talking about is their honest opinion. It's not sponsored and scripted or anything like that. And it's 100% authentic. You also want to pick a blogger or YouTuber, whoever it may be, that is similar to you. The reason why it's important to pick a review from someone that is similar to you is because their opinion is going to be specific to their personal experience with the product. For example, I like to watch reviews by Shannon Harris, ShanXO, here on YouTube, because we have very, very similar skin in the way of its behavior. Um, I've been watching her for a very, very long time, and it seems that our skin is pretty much the same. I also like to watch Shannon's videos for reviews because we have similar features. We have similar eye color. Most of the time we have similar hair color. She is quite a lot blonder than I am. But in that regard, we still kind of have similar features. So when I watch a review from Shannon, I know myself that the way the product performs on her is going to be very similar to me. Now, this isn't just for skincare and stuff. This can be very important for things like foundation. Because if I watch a review on someone with really oily skin and they say that the foundation didn't last and it slipped around, that's going to be due to their oily skin and therefore that product might not slip around on me. So you really wanna make sure that the blogger that you are getting the review from has similar features to you, similar skin issues or lack of issues or whatever it might be. Just make sure that you guys can relate because then the products are going to behave similarly on your skin as it did on theirs. Okay, so that is like my overall tip. 
Now I'm just going to focus on drugstore for a little bit. So when you're shopping in the drugstore, you don't have the same luxury of being in a high-end store and having access to a makeup artist and being able to have the makeup applied to you by a professional. So when you're in the drugstore and you're shopping for foundation, you always want to test the foundation on your neck. Right now, looking at my hand, it's very pale compared to my face. However, my face is pretty much the same color as my neck. You always want to make sure that your neck and your face match. So make sure that your foundation matches your neck. Now, once you have the tester on your neck, you want to walk around for a little bit. Just a little bit, not too long. Walk outside if you can in the sun. Um, just if you've got the time, maybe just quickly go and grab a drink or something and come back. This is to make sure A, you do not have an allergic reaction to the foundation or the product. Secondly, it is going to make sure that the product stays the color that it was when you originally put it on. So you don't just want to look at the color and go, yeah, okay, I'm good, let's go, let's buy this product. Because you might get home and find that once the product dried, it became flaky. Maybe it made your skin really red and irritated. Maybe it went super, super orange. You just don't know. So it's good to just try it on your neck, walk around for a little bit, get a drink, get well acquainted with the product, you know, and then if you're happy with it, then go ahead and buy it. And you should be going home with the right product for you. Now, if you are shopping in a high-end store, so this is something like if you're just going into Mac or like a one brand thing like that, or whether you're going into a multi-brand store such as Sephora or Mecca Cosmetica or Mecca Maxima here in Australia, it's in these stores that you're going to have a better opportunity to become very well acquainted with the product before you buy it. In a high-end store, you have the luxury of having well-trained makeup artists around you. So you can go up to them, ask them if they wouldn't mind trying the product on you. This way they can test the foundation on you as best as they can. They have the proper tools to do so. They are well educated on all the products where they should be and they can definitely help you out in that regard. Again, I would still suggest like waiting a little bit. Um, sometimes I find that they just do a little bit but they can do your whole face if you like. This can be good because different areas of your face behave differently. You might be oily in the T-zone, but dry in other parts of your face. So try and do the whole face if you can. Um, if you already have makeup on and that's not really what you feel like doing, then they can just do like a small part. They usually like to do down here and that can be great. But yeah, just again, try and keep it on for a little bit before buying the product just to see how it reacts with your skin. So this is probably my number one tip for shopping in a high end makeup store. When you have found the foundation that you think you are definitely happy with and you want to buy, go ahead and ask the makeup artist if they wouldn't mind giving you a little sample once you've purchased the product. They will only give you a sample if you are purchasing the product. So what they will do is they'll take a few pumps from the tester product or the product that they use for makeup application and they'll go ahead and pop it into one of these little tub things. So this is one that I got from Mecca Maxima. So they have just gone and put a tiny bit of product into this little tub for me. The reason why this is so helpful is because then you can take this home with you as well as the product that you've just purchased. Then when you're at home, do not touch the full size product. Do not even open the box. You want to leave it perfect. You want it in perfect condition. You want to go ahead and use this the first time that you use the product. That way you can really see the performance of the product. And if you don't like it, you can return it. You can return the full size product and get all your money back. For things like makeup, that can be so important because if you hadn't had that sample and you went home and you tried the foundation in the full size, the proper product, and it didn't work for you, there is no way you would have been able to return it. If you have a little sample and you use this first and the full size product that you have paid for is untouched and perfect, of course they'll take it back, you haven't even opened it. So when it comes to drugstore, lip liners, lipsticks, please don't put them on your mouth. If you do, however, want to see how a lipstick is going to look on you, but you don't want to put it on your face, which I definitely suggest you don't, you want to go ahead and take the tester, wind the bullet all the way up, and just hold it over your mouth. By doing this, you can see what the color looks like against the rest of the features of your face without the disgusting factor of having to put it on your lips. Once you've found a lipstick that you think works nicely with your facial features, 
what you want to do is then go ahead and test it on the back of your hand. Testing it on your hand is going to see how much that color pays off, how pigmented the product is, whether it's sheer, glossy, buttery, all that sort of thing. This is going to give you a feel for the texture of the product without having to put it anywhere near your mouth. Fortunately, when you are shopping in high end, this doesn't really apply so much because a lot of the time, like I said for foundations, you are going to have a professional there and they will have products that can be tested on your mouth that they have kept hygienic and that aren't just for the general public to play with. Lip liners. I feel like lip liners aren't really a thing that people pay too much attention to when they're makeup shopping. When you swatch it on the back of your hand, your hand is pretty sturdy and the skin on your hand is pretty taut. Especially when you're making a fist, which is what people usually do when they're swatching a product. The skin is tight and therefore the pencil is just going to glide over it pretty easily. Your lips though are not like the skin on the back of your hand at all. They stretch, they are kind of like smooshy and they slide around. The skin on the back of your hand as well is pretty durable, it's hardy, it's your hand, it's used to getting sort of like beaten up. Your lips, not so much, it's a very gentle thing. Um, you're not gonna like go in hard on your lips and you're definitely not gonna push as hard on your lips as you are on your hand. So instead, when you're testing the product on the back of your hand with a pencil, whether it's a lip pencil or an eye pencil, because your eye is the same, it's not going to be taut. It's going to be quite wriggly skin. It's going to move around a lot. And of course, it's very, very sensitive. So what I like to do is just have a relaxed hand. And I like to use the side of my hand because it feels similar to your lips. What I want to do is just very lightly I'm like barely pressing at all. This is going to show me what it's going to come up on my lips like. Same goes for your eye. With um, eyeliner pencils, when you're pushing it on the back of your hand, you're pushing really, really hard and you're going to get a really strong line. But when you just softly go like this, it's kind of more of a charcoal-y color. This is also going to give you a good gauge for how the product works. So you're going to see if it's kind of got a glossy finish or if it's quite dry. You know when a lip liner is really dry and it kind of drags across your lips? Yeah, you just want to do that on the, your hand just to see if it's draggy or if it's buttery. Things like that. Okay guys, so I think I'm going to finish this video here. So I hope that you've really enjoyed this video. I hope that it will save you money in the future or time or just sanity. All my social media will be linked below as well so if you have any questions I'm more than happy to talk to you. Um, you can chat with me on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. Also please do give me a thumbs up just to let me know that you really did find this video helpful. Um, I really hope to see you again soon on my channel. Have an awesome day and I'll see you next time. Bye.